so you are uh, so are you so welcome to the studio my name is finavar and soon we are going to start live stream where we are going to be inspired by the darker mood and the brush the altering brush techniques so let me just give a shout everywhere and we are going to start in a moment I will just switch to the top view for now. And if you are here, you can let your friends know on uh, Facebook and on Instagram. We are starting very soon. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, hello, great to see you. I am just getting ready. I hope you can hear me well. Hello again. Oh, sorry. Hello, everybody. I can see my camera is tilted a little bit, but hopefully that won't matter. Good to see you. And um, I'm very happy to see you in my studio today. And this plastic bag is not the most amazing setup. Let's pretend it never happened. So as always, it's a little bit informal. And ah, thank you. I'm happy you like my earrings. I really enjoy having longer earrings. So this is great that I can wear them every day. <laughs> and um, ah, and dress like. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I got some new dresses. I have to uh, now try them all on and enjoy because it is time to uh, change a little bit in the wardrobe because I didn't have anything nice and comfortable to wear at home. So this is one of them. Welcome everybody. And uh, I hope you're ready for quite relaxed and enjoyable session when we are going to play with the ideas how to alter the brush uh, in a darker mood. And um, I've got some projects that I'm able to show you that were done in the past. So of course we are going to go towards black just so as a starting point but then of course the color choices may be very very different so we we can discuss what you would like to get and um this is of course optional when it comes to the color palette and the ideas i can give you some options as well so you will see that you can do similar techniques with more than one product and i think this is cool to know in general live streams like that are um to learn the techniques and to get the inspired get inspired at the same time so there are always ways to do things and they're not uh, you can you know exchange the products if you don't have exactly the ones that 
I'm using. Hello, and I can see I've got people here from all over the world. I'll just put the screen a little bit closer so I can read. I can see, okay, California and Greece and Norway and... Oh, wow. Uh, I can see my some of my patrons joining as well. If you want to, because this stream is open for everybody, this will be the greatest moment to give the thumbs up so we will get better coverage and will be more visible and discover discoverable on YouTube. And also the same thing, you can share it on your social media. You can share the link so people will join and there will be a larger group watching at the same time. Thank you so much for that. You can share it in the groups, like Finnevar and Friends Open Studio. I shared it already, but hmm? you can share it on your own wall. And yes, you can post it on your Instagram. You can post it on your Facebook. This one is um, open for everybody, not just for patrons. So um, I'm very happy to see so many people joining. I can see big girls from Poland as well. This is great. Cieszę się bardzo, że tu jesteście. Bardzo mi miło. And if you have any questions in, uh, you know, during the stream, I will try to answer, of course. Hello to Spain and hello to Canada and Panama. Oh, that's a, another country which is on my wish list. Thank you very much for sharing. This way more people will be able to join and hopefully they will have nice evening creating or a nice day or morning depending what time of the day it is so uh, first of all um, if you were thinking what kind of supplies may be useful when you're going to work with the three three dimensional projects it's good to have um, a bit of the dimensional glue and that may be modeling paste or that may be uh, 3D gel or heavy body gel. These are the options which are going to work pretty well for this kind of combination. And um, of course, heavy body gel is the thickest of them all. So um, it's going to be the easiest to use. So for example, 3D gloss gel is uh, going to be uh, transparent and glossy. You may see that later, but most likely under all the paints, you won't see your adhesive. Uh, the other option would be 3D matte gel, the same kind of pro uh, product, but in the matte finish. The third option, heavy body gel, which I don't see here. So I will just, something happened. I will just grab one quickly. Or modeling paste. Um, as you can see, my jar of modeling paste is very tired already. But these will be good options uh, for uh, gluing things down and they're going to work pretty fast. My favorite ones are usually the heavy body gel or modeling paste because they seem to work the fastest because they dry uh, the quickest and they are going to hold everything in place. Uh, other important product uh, would be black gesso. Don't eat it. Okay, my dog was trying to eat the jar oh, that fell on the ground. And then, of course, different kinds of embellishments, elements you may have. Um, and because I just uh, released in January the new molds that have new elements we can play with, and some of them are quite dark. Um, these will be great to use in uh, our project. However, because I've seen a lot of um, projects, including schools in the last uh, weeks, which is wonderful, I was thinking I will show you a little bit more like elegant and maybe more gothic uh, project instead of uh, just uh, simply spooky with the bird school or the uh, human school. So that is one of the things I would like to include. And um, then of course some metal embellishments will be very useful. And if you are wondering what you can use in the molds, oh, sorry, 
for glare. Um, you can use hot glue, you can use a modeling material, which is more like air drying clay. You can use uh, resin. All of these products work uh, pretty well. And that is something that you can uh, just pour into your mold, uh, mod into your molds and um, the results are going to be quite pleasing. Um, there are a little bit, uh, like there will be a little bit different feelings depending on product you are using. Some people say that uh, some kinds of the air drying clay, they may give a bit of imperfections and a little bit more of the cracks, which is great sometimes because you get more texture. Some people prefer them perfect, so they will focus more on the resin you know personal preferences are um, uh, just the, one of the factors if you are wondering how to use the molds with the resin um i've made a live stream a couple of weeks ago and it is uploaded here to youtube as well so you can watch and see how you can work with your mold and what you can do so now uh, we are going to uh, start now i'm going to flip the camera. If there are any questions before we start, I will just have a look. Mm, oh, hot weather in Mexico. <laughs> it is surprisingly nice here in Ireland. We have a couple of drier days and it's turning into beautiful spring. So <laughs> I'm getting a bit excited about that. We are able to go somewhere and enjoy the outdoors. So if you don't have your spring yet, uh, I have my fingers crossed for you and uh, hopefully it is going to come. I've seen it's not everywhere yet, so I know it is not kind of like disappointing. We would love to have that already. Okay, so now um, I will flip the camera so you will have a look at the uh, supplies that I prepared. And I will quickly grab the jar of the heavy body gel because apparently, for some reason, I don't have it here. Um, these ones are done before and they give you some ideas on how you can create uh, the darker look. And the brush we're using today is also very tired. It was used to paint the walls with some kind of primer. So I would say probably half of the bristle is gone. But it's still okay for making art and uh, altering it. So this is finally uh, the day when this poor brush is going to turn into something pretty. And um, <laughs> I hope this is just the, you know, the best way to um, hmm, finally use it for something. <laughs> so um, let me flip the camera. Yep. I will you run really quickly to get my brush I uh, sorry, to, to get my gel I think I have to just adjust the angle a little bit better yeah that should be it mm -hmm. and here you can see selection of different elements I prepared for today Here we are. So now, um, first of all, we need to look at the, um, the possibilities of making some surfaces. And of course, there are many options. And uh, one of them is to start with some kind of texture. And if you would like to create um, effect with the stencil, you have to pick something that is going to be very, very uh, simple to use because the shape of the brush 
it's not too great for adding textures. It is just an even surface. So here I experimented with a little bit of the glitter paste and I use it with a very simple uh, dot stencil. And it worked nicely, but uh, it is not an easy option. You have to find the right design that is going to work for you. Um, other way is to add something on the top, maybe adding some string around it, or maybe like here, you can start with a piece of lace. This was not finished, haha. <laughs> so I'm not showing the other side. And this is my plan for today. I was thinking because the brush is so wide, I can add nice uh, details that are going to be hanging and hiding these not so beautiful bristles. You can see how poor they are. And um, I can find another element that is going to add extra texture on the handle. So these are pieces of lace. And I'm sure you can find something um, similar to create the look on your brush. And because we're going for a romantic gothic look, uh, that is uh, quite a good option, right? Uh, steampunk nautical. Mm, I like that concept. <laughs> so you can, of course, find uh, smaller bits and pieces that are going to work pretty well. And you can cut them to measure. Um, I will do that with this one. It's a little bit too long, so I will remove some elements. And in my first step, I'm just going to glue it on the handle so it looks like um, some natural flowers, which would be um, decorating our brush. Uh, very romantic touches. You don't really have to use heavy body gel for this step. Um, it is like... Uh, hmm almost like using Gorilla Glue to uh, stick pieces of paper to each other. So if you have something else on hand, for example, 3D gel, so something more liquid, this is going to work and it's going to be a good solution. Oh, this one is almost dead and empty. So I will get the one which is a little bit more fresh. And we will stick the lace first. 3D mud gel, perfect. The one, uh, really, one of the advantages working on the wooden objects is you don't have to prime them that much. Most of them, they're going to be accepting the art mediums right away, especially sticky stuff. Uh, such as uh, gel mediums or modeling paste. They're not going to be a big problem. Of course, if you're planning to uh, paint, I would say first add gesso because uh, the wood may uh, simply try to absorb a lot of your paint. But here with this sticky medium uh, gel that is working as adhesive, there's no way it's going to sink into the wood so we can stick it without priming our surface. Okay, that should be enough. Let's see how it is going to work. This way, apparently. Of course, now my fingers are sticky. Oh! Happy birthday to Denise. I'm very glad that we can make your birthday a little bit more fun. Hopefully you will have a great uh, birthday. I wish you all the best. <laughs> I will rearrange the leaves <laughs> so they go, go a little bit different way. Because I'm afraid here nobody will see them, so... I will just cut off and use them in the other part. Maybe here, together with this flower. Oh, you're still waiting for the new molds. I'm so sorry to hear it takes so long for you. Hmm. Hopefully soon 
I wish it really depends on the country in some places you get it quite quickly in some some other ones you have to wait a bit longer unfortunately this flower needs a little bit more oh now so we added the texture and of course if you are sticking things like lace or some other flexible elements you can go around a little bit to make it look more nice and the next thing is uh, once you stick it you can dry it with the heat gun before you will put next element so it is going to stick uh, to the surface of course when you have dimensional uh, object you can work on both sides today we're going to do one side to save the time but you can uh, dry and then put on the other side and repeat the same step and make two different compositions on um, the same brush so it's like extra <laughs> extra touch for example on this one on one side we have big big rows with wings and on the other side we have smaller version of similar composition <coughs> so now uh, a moment with the heat gun Yes, we are going for more romantic and gothic romantic look, so darker mood, but still very feminine. We are trying to channel our inner um, hmm, Mary Shelley or Edgar Allan Poe instead of simply um, Halloween spooky mood. And this way, hopefully, we are going to have a great start, some floral elements are going to give us nice intricate touches and they're also going to cover this not very attractive bristle of the brush thank you and welcome <laughs> okay it doesn't have to be very dry it's just enough to feel that you know it is kind of sticking this one here is still moving, so we can add a bit more of the gel. It's good to have some wet wipes next to you so you can clean your fingers. And now, once the bottom layer is done, we can start adding elements to turn the usual brush into something more magical. And here, because we're going to use dimensional elements, it was uh, quite wise to take really a strong dimensional glue and something that's going to be thick and hold the things in place. So I would stick the heavy body gel now. <laughs> I would stick, haha, <laughs> that was funny. So fresh jar, I will just open. Hopefully I can, uh, I have no patience. So I'll just open making a hole in it. I will take a portion of it on my palette. So I have it on hand and you can see this one is really like jello, very thick and um, also very sticky medium. So it's easy to make the composition and to keep all the elements in place. So, so far we used uh, 3D gel to stick the lace. Now we are going to use heavy body gel to glue everything else. I will keep it here just in case if we need more. Hello, hello to Tatiana and hello to Maria. Welcome to the live stream. So we have the first layer. And this is what I recommend when you are trying to work on the project and you are not sure what you would like to do. So like a press selection of the possibly matching elements. And uh, for today, I made a lot of elements with the uh, molds from the latest release. So they are from Finovar molds. And I also have some of the mechanicals which are going to match the idea. So some leaves because of the flowers and uh, 
there will be some faces I want to try on and I even have a school just in case to show you how that would work and um, oh hello we have one more fan who is going to support us thank you so much to Patty you are so kind thank you thank you <laughs> for joining and um, I really wanted to try the composition where I'm going to use the resin frame and you can see I was already planning a little bit so I broke it into pieces because I want one piece to sit here on the top of the lace and uh, follow the shape of the brush so maybe I will just make it as flat as possible and I want the other part to hang a little bit down here right so the original size of the frame wasn't working so I can cheat a little bit and pull it up and down to add extra uh, length and it's going to work better as a medallion <laughs> How do you become an art fan? I'm a Pretrian art buddy already. Uh, this is like another thing you can do on the YouTube channel. Um, 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 Amanda, uh, once you are my patron on Patreon, really, this is more than enough. And you are so, uh, so appreciated for your support. If you want to, you can click on the... Um, on the donation stickers or you can become a fan then this way when i do some open streams you can send me some tips and there is option usually on the bottom of the chat with the like the dollar sign you can do that to all the uh, streamers who've got who's got uh, the youtube payments approved and if you are watching somebody's tutorials and you can see they are accepting tips uh, you can do that. I think it's a lovely thing to do. So you can buy some kind of stickers with the lovely little creatures or you can just send donations or you can register as a fan and this is like a monthly tip coming to that person. Um, it is wonderful. However, as my patron, you are doing so much. So you can see the first step is done. <laughs> that is... Um, the extra long uh, frame and I'm gluing that using heavy body gel which I have here on my finger now let's look at the option what can be on the top of it um, I really wanted to include flowers right I have some flowers here this is like broken lotus and that I can use the another option for me there's the rose so I have that and I have different styles of leaves to fit them into my project. So, you know, we will see what is going to work best. I have some of the woodland leaves, woodland ferns and the new rusty monstera. I think monsteras may be too big, but if I want to check, I won't even know. Then I want to add some grungy stuff. So I have uh, different mechanicals. And uh, that means they will give us nice sizes to work with. I have bigger and smaller. I have also another uh, kind of the um, dimensional elements and different faces to put in. <laughs> so I have this one, which I think will be winner for today. This is medallion with very mysterious lady face or this uh, sleeping person. I'm not sure if this is a lady or a gentleman. I think it's more masculine face, but you never know, honestly. And um, we also have this one to try. <laughs> so let's see how does it going to work. And then for extra touches, I've got some of the smaller elements. Uh, I've got some uh, bones because we are going for the darker mood. And we've got some smaller cogs. We've got uh, re really tiny, tiny uh, schools as well. So these will go later. First, we have to build the, the main composition that is going to sit in here. So if we're going to use this one, as I was thinking, I, I can even pull 
that a little bit up and down because this medallion is so big. Oh, look at that. That will be perfect placement. And of course, we have plenty of space on the sides. We can use that for making some nice compositions. And I was thinking I will add a lotus flower on one side and then some leaves. And on the other side, we're going to play maybe with uh, some kind of mechanical elements. So that is the plan for today. Just to show you other options. When we are going to use the face like that, you can play with wings because if you're going to have the space here, then you can add some wings and then you will have a like sleeping angel, right? Or uh, in this case, maybe sleeping uh, vampire <laughs> with the bat wings. That is one of the popular combi combinations. Or you can put the school on the top and then you will have this very cool looking composition where you can include the wings and the school. That is also a very good option. In general, breaking the frame into two pieces is giving us a lot of ideas and a lot of elements we can add to this on the sides and we can put them under the main element as well. I will check uh, what um, what are the comments coming because I can see you're discussing. Yeah, you like the medallion. Yeah, I love it. And I think this is a little bit underestimated uh, because people focus on the wings and the school so much. But I think these faces are absolutely beautiful. Can you cut the mold before it fully hardens? Uh, yes, but you have to remember if you use the resin, uh, this working time is going to be quite short. So this is the moment when you can shape it or cap cut it. Uh, and you have to wear gloves because it is still reacting. So it may be bad for your hands and skin. Okay. Mm. <laughs> that statue like faces creep you out. <laughs> I walk very fast through the statue area in the museum. Of course, if you have that feelings, you should not even try. So maybe medallion is going to be better for you. Let's try to include this cog on that side. And that means I may need to move my frame a little bit, lift it. Because uh, this is quite dimensional, but no worries. Mm -hmm. We can do that. And then on this side, we can add the flower. If you feel something is hanging in the air, like this one, you can simply add more of the gel so it's going to even up. Or you can try to slide something on the other side, like I'm trying to slide the flower under, so it's going to support it. See, I know we may have a lot of people who are beginners here, so I'm trying to explain all the steps very uh, carefully and to give you all the important information that you may need if you do this kind of things just for the first time. Uh, so those of you who are real pros, <laughs> you may feel like I'm repeating the things you know already, but please remember we are doing that as a um, experience for everybody. So I hope this is not going to be boring for you. Let's see how this one sits nicely. Okay, I will move this flower a little bit. Now we can try Try to fill that with some more elements. This one feels a little bit too big. Let's find a smaller one. Smaller cog. This one maybe. Mm -hmm. This one is much better. Uh, 
don't worry about the imperfections now because we are going to fill the gaps and empty spaces with um, um, little thingies and embellishments if needed. So this is just a bit of the extra work and everything will look perfect. I would like to add leaves around the flower and maybe one more flower for a um, more natural look. Hmm, I'm not sure this is going to sit in here. I can try to put it on the top of the cog. Or on the other side, it will be even better. Let's get to. <laughs> part of my, like really, part of my plan is to make you feel better uh, by creating for you. So, you know, this is like a little thing we can do for ourselves. I broke the rose, I'm sorry. I'm just going to use it on the other side for good measure. This is the moment when I have to think how much space I've got and what I can do with that space. So there may be some decisions when I'm changing my mind and this is absolutely natural. You don't have to feel like, oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. It's going to be a disaster. It happens to all of us. My dog really needed to come back in. <sighs> we keep, keep learning new things and new skills in this house. Okay, it still feels empty. So I'm going to add this one here. So again, I'm this is advantage of working with the uh, gel mediums. They don't dry quickly. So you can lift and you can slide things under. Okay, now I would love to add something on that side. So I will look for the leaf that is going to work. And this one is, as I expected, it's too big. But we can try include other shapes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I'm I have to tell you, I wasn't so sure because you're complimenting my dog now. I wasn't so sure because, you know, it's always a new breed and we never had um, a sheepdog before. Before we always had some kind of hunting breeds and they have completely different personalities. Uh, some They are very independent thinking and they kind of require a lot of attention, but also they are very happy to take care of themselves sometimes. So it is not so easy to control what they are planning to do. And sheepdogs, they are different. Sheepdogs, they would like everybody to be in one place, apparently. They like to keep us all flocked in one place. Like sheep, you know, like sheep. <laughs> so it's a new experience for us to have a dog that is trying to uh, control where we are and watching us all constantly and being a little bit frustrated when we go to different parts of the house and he can't be with us all. <laughs> it's uh, fun. It is fun. And um, he's got the most optimistic and friendly personality you can imagine so that's a great um, advantage such lovely animal i have to tell you now i need to put something here so this empty space uh, is uh, going to be filled with something it may be cardboard or some embellishment you don't like that will be my uh, next step. But first I have to feel the composition of the flowers a little bit more. I have to find things 
which are going to add extra nice look. Let me see what happens if I cut it. Oh yeah, that is nice. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it, you have to change the design. I also have a dragonfly and I may use that later to make it sit here. Let's see if this is possible. Mm, quite possible. And that will be really nice, I think. Now I need something cool here. And that may be another cog. And now because we are going for gothic style, I would try to include a little bit of bones as well. You know, we are going to channel our inner Mary Shelley or uh, Edgar Allan Poe. So let's try to see if we can do that and if we can add them somewhere in this composition or a little bird school that would be really cool I think this is the mini mini one I have a question. You designed new molds. Do they pay um, per molds sold? <laughs> it is not like per... Yeah, basically, when you are a product designer, depending on the contract you have, you will have different ways of being paid. So in some situations, you would be uh, getting um, the, the royalties, which is you get the percentage of... Uh, the money which comes from the sold items. So for example, if you sold 10 sets of brushes, you would get percentage from each set. And in other cases, other companies, they pay you pay design, they pay per design. So they will pay you upfront. They will buy the rights to your designs. And then you only get the price that you agreed on in the very beginning. I hope that helps. Yeah, I always try to show you different ways of making the composition because um, I think when you look at somebody else's uh, creating process, it is helping you to get some ideas as well. So you may be thinking that, hmm, I'm not too confident, but this is the, real the reality. I'm showing you the way I create. So this is not like I pre-planned the whole project. I had the general idea what I want to do, but all the details now, I have to just add and decide on them while we are speaking. So if you are thinking about being a product designer, you have to talk to the company you're hoping to work with and then ask what is their offer, like what is the contract they want to give you, because it all depends on the brand, on all de depends on, so on your preferences. In a way, I think uh, being paid per sold product is uh, the most, uh, hmm. Like the most right, like the most natural, because the better job you do while designing and promoting it, the more money you are able to get. If you are not really great at designing or your design wasn't too successful, it is going to be less money. If you are going to put a lot of work into designing and then into promoting, uh, very likely it is going to pay off and uh, the sales are going to be better. 
so closer look before we are going to add more elements. So we are starting to put this extra creepy elements in. Not too much, but something to make it look a little bit more quirky. I'm trying to fit the bone. Oh, that would be so nice. Luckily, it can fit under the flower. Hello, hello. I'm very happy you are here. Don't apologize. I'm happy that you are joining us in our little um, project and very informal creative meeting. So you can see, I can lift items many times and put them back into the place, but I have to reapply the gel because if I lift it, kind of changes the whole uh, dynamics in between the elements. So it's better to reapply. Okay, that works really cool. Uh, I have a bone here and bone here. I really want to put bone on the other side. <laughs> so I will try to find a way to include a piece of bone. I really love the bones. Yes, I have these ones for quite a while. <laughs> I really use them for almost everything when it comes to... Hmm... How to put it in here somehow, but I have to cut it smaller, shorter. Meh. Okay, let's hope this is going to stay here nicely. Oh, I'm not so sure. Let's hope. Hmm. What do you think? I quite like this concept for the bones. What about attaching the dragonfly wings to the bone? Hmm. Now you are speaking my language. I think that might be a very cool idea. We can try that. Let's stick this one here. I will leave that space for the dragonfly, hoping it is going to fit. And we have nice textures coming out of here. Yeah, we have that here. Where's the dragonfly? We will see. If not, I will have another idea what to do. And now we can add something to the top. Here is the hole and it's maybe not the most beautiful element here, so uh, we can find something that is going to cover that. So that may be a little cog or star. Stars are quite cool. Or this regal symbol, which would fit really well. <laughs> the memory had crazy. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> Forever. Like, there's no space for that. I think this one is going to be good. Yeah, you made it! No problem at all. I'm happy to see you here. Welcome, welcome. And uh, <laughs> join our crazy train. <laughs> we are adding a lot of elements here on this brush. I want to be able to put it on the wall because I have a space when I have the brushes on, so I'm not going to decorate the other side. I want to keep it flat, but I'm going to add a lot of details, so it should work really well. Uh, first of all, what you can add, these will be elements such as little, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, little screw heads, or you can add little pebbles, which are going to add finishing touches. We have quite a lot of spaces where you can put these, for example, inside of the flowers, 
or on the top of the cogs or just on the top of the brush to add extra uh, textures. <laughs> A, e, witam serdecznie kolejną osobę z Polski, bardzo mi miło. Zapraszam i jeśli macie jakieś pytania, to można to również po polsku też odpowiem. E, this is uh, almost full, but now we are going to work on the little pieces, little details. So I have really, really small resin elements like this. And I've got a quite cool combination of the balls and little stars that we can include. And when I mention the pebbles, they also come in various sizes, so you can find something which is going to work. And uh, Just uh, for a moment in Polish now. Uh, wszystkie elementy, które tutaj widać i są w takim kolorze, one są zrobione z żywicy. To jest rezin dwuskładnikowy, szybko schnący. Uh, zrobienie go zajmuje około, taki element zajmuje około 20 minut. Uh, krzepnie szybko i daje duży, um, du dużą wierność uh, od odwzorowania elementu. Także polecam, bo fajna zabawa. So, uh, details, but before that, let's put this one in. Cardboard or something else that we can use to lift that composition up a little bit. Yep, Ooh. inside, inside. Just in case if there are my patrons here and uh, you know that this weekend we are going to celebrate uh, the patron birthday, first birthday of patron. And um, I promise you this weekend we are going to make our fun chats and giveaways. It is coming and I have the flyer ready. So I will post later today. Uh, save the date on Sunday. Um, unfortunately, I can't do it on Saturday due to family matters. But Sunday, our usual time, so 7 p.m. of my time, we have a date. Okay, that should work. <laughs> Now, big blob of gel that is going to hold it in place. Remember, the gel is better solution when it comes to uh, dimensional gluing than hot glue, because hot glue may finally chip off, and that happens quite often. And if you're planning to display your project or people will be touching that a lot, it's much better to uh, just take a little bit extra time, some patience, and then these elements are going to stay forever. So this way you have something that you can easily display without fear that something will break. Okay. And now details before we are going to dry it. That will be very cute. So I'm going to add this little, little gear on the top. And then I'm going to look for some nice finishing touch. Maybe a star or maybe a little bolt. Maybe mini star will be great. I collect these <laughs> all the time after classes or after projects and I put them in the uh, jars with the names on the top. So I have a jar with hearts, I have a jar with stars. Most of the times I'm really good when it comes to sorting, but sometimes I lose my patience. And then there will be a random star in between the bolts and screws, for example. Oh, come on, don't do that. Be nice. <sighs> no patience again. Go. Stay. Hopefully, Terry, you will be able to join. If not, 
We will be missing you. But I understand this is not always possible. Uh, no, these embellishments are sold in the packages and they usually contain about 30 small stars in it or um, they will have 25 of the similar items. So it's really enough for some of the projects. I just collect the leftovers and keep them safe in case if I need them for something. So here I would like to cover this crack. You can see there is like a space between the bone and the frame. And of course this is annoying, so I have to find something to fit it in. Maybe a diamond shaped pebble because we are, we are going for this romantic, uh, grungy look, the gothic style. So I have some of these pebbles and I think that would be a really nice add-on because it has this diamond cut on it. Hmm. No, I don't like it. Come on. Ah. Of course now it is going to be stuck here, right? Forever. Okay, now you know the secret. There's a hidden pebble and nobody knows how to take it out. <laughs> Story of my life. Hmm. Or maybe, yeah, that is a solution. Another one inside of the flower and maybe something slightly different in the other one so they're not all the same. Ooh, again, not upside down, please. Try to go nicely in. And then again, wet brush and I take out the excess. Trying to push it in. So this is what we have so far. And I think that looks quite nice. It's really rich. It has a lot of details and all of the imperfections we can always cover with some beads or glass glitter or regular glitter, depending what you prefer to use. We can check the other side. Yeah, I was sure there will be something. This big blob of gel is annoying, so that has to go in. Checking the other side. Yeah, same story. Up here. Mm -hmm. Cleaning that up. And now, <laughs> and now I think uh, it is ready for drying so we can start thinking about painting and the color palette we would like to use. Hello, Tiffany. I think it's a great start. The construction is done. I included the bones, which I really love because um, it's adding extra, but it is not so obvious as putting the school in, for example, or the butt wing. So that makes me absolutely happy. And now we need to dry it. 
um, to make sure everything looks nice. I'm just thinking if I should add the dragonfly, and I think I should. So this is the right, no, this is not the right moment. I will stick it later. It will be easier. So have you got any questions so far? Uh, we added the background and we added the elements. So in this case, uh, everything needs to be dry before we are going to prime it and start working with the colors on the top. Of course, your composition can be very simple or it may be very, very complicated with a lot of elements, but general idea is the same. Uh, you put it all together and make sure everything stays in place nicely uh, before you're going to, you know, touch it with the brush because uh, you don't want to be disappointed when the things will come off. So it's really, really important that you will spend a bit of time on the drying. Yeah, I think the dragonfly will be great. So now I'm using the heat gun and I will dry it from different angles. To make sure everything seems, you know, is sitting nicely. This is one of the advantages of the heavy body gel. It dries quite quickly. So maybe two, three minutes and it should be ready to paint. Yeah, I have this dragonfly here, so I will try to keep it in front of me just in case, so I won't forget it. Do you burn the tips of your brush with the heat gun? Sometimes I do, although this one is so tired and worn out, I'm not sure if I want to burn it more, because uh, I'm afraid there will be not much left. I told you it was really used for painting the walls before. So I'm afraid there will be not that much of the bristle left if I will burn it. Yeah, exactly. All the products that I'm using and all of them that, you know, that I made, except uh, Crackle, they are possible to dry with the heat gun or hair dryer, which is very important because uh, you sometimes don't have the time to let it dry naturally. Uh, the only thing is, if you see this start to bubble, it means they need a bit of the, you know, extra space because you're probably burning them too much. But it's not a really big problem. You can come back in that same place later, you know, in a moment and everything will be fine. You can let it cool down for a moment and then continue. So as you can see, I'm trying to go from different angles so I can get in between the embellishments a little bit better. Okay, I will check now how it is going. We can even cool it down. <laughs> so I'm not going to burn my fingers. Let's see. This one, this here may need a little bit more of the drying. Hot, hot, hot. This one is fine. This one is fine. This one needs more drying, obviously. This one is okay, this one a little bit more, and this one a little bit more. I think this one doesn't have enough of the gel. That's why we have a bit of the problem here. So you can see the whole process of drying when you prepare your project for painting doesn't take too long. Um, one of the things, of course, it is the right adhesive. So this is the one that is designed for dimensional projects like that. And on purpose, it is um, done the way that it is holding the elements in place quite quickly. 
but if you don't have heavy body gel or modeling paste or any other of the art basics mediums I mentioned, if you use traditional glue, you still have to wait until the elements are securely sitting in pla on place. Oh, first I'm watching live. Uh, welcome, and I'm so happy you are here. It's great to watch live because you can ask questions and, you know, chat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, we really have quite informal and friendly atmosphere here. So we can play with different effects, elements. And you can see how I create without editing. <laughs> Thank you. Dziękuję. <laughs> Okay, another try. I'm just going to pick up this poor, poor burnt heavy body gel from here. This is fine. This is much better. Yeah. This is quite good. This one is much better. Okay, so just the school here on the bottom. And we can start painting. Dzień dobry, dzień dobry, cieszę się i zapraszam. Is that the feel of by your name? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Okay, I think this is enough. If something happens, I will just re-glue it. Now I can put something under the brush and I will be able to paint it. I will find a mat and we will start painting with black gesso. This way we will have nice dark surface to start with. And painting with black gesso is scary for some people, but it's great technique when you want to make the dimensional project uh, really visibly dimensional, really deep. So the black gesso is going to create a natural shadow. And then on the top of that shadow, you can add a lot of lighter colors, but it's going to work nicely to give you the depth. So, uh, you just need a brush and a jar of gesso or a tube of gesso, depending what you prefer. And then we are going to paint everything. So this way it will be all matte and um, easy to work with, uh, work on with the uh, paints of different kinds or matte waxes, whatever we prefer to use. So medium sized brush. <laughs> you can paint or you can dab. There are two versions depending how you feel. It's easier to paint on the sides, but on the top of the texture, very likely you're going to just dab it on. Oh, again, I just touched it. I'm going to paint the back first so I can dry it and then lay it flat. It will be easier for me to hold once it is painted.
And then, of course, I want to paint the bristle as well. You can see there's not much left. <laughs> I don't mind messy hands, but uh, with black gesso, I will touch something in a moment and it's going to be a problem. So I try to keep it at least partly clean. Like for example, I can touch my face and then I will be funny looking for the rest of the live stream. <laughs> Which happens a lot. <laughs> you can see how quickly the gesso dries. It's turning matte already and that means it is drying. Once it is matte, it is permanent and it's like isolation. So you can uh, put another layer of the elements, uh, sorry, uh, mediums on the top and everything will stay nicely because it is matte finish, it's going to stick to it. And because it is um, isolation as well, so nothing will be soaking into your surface. I think I need to paint that inside. clean either it's just like I don't want to uh, be whole covered with black gesso so I will try at least to be a bit safe okay that should be enough so now if I want to, I can hold it easily and I'll have no problems with painting. You can see I, uh, I'm i dipping my brush from time to time in the water as well. Uh, this just is quite thick and it is already half open. So it was open for a long time, so it's getting thicker. So you can either add extra water into your gesso or like me, when you're painting, you can dip your brush in the water from time to time to make it a little bit softer. It's really up to you. Now, dabbing, because we need to get to all these dimensional, deeper parts of the composition. These elements have a lot of spaces there, so if you want to get there, this is the easiest way. Also, on the elements like this one, there's a lot of detail, so if you're going to use some um, product on the top to highlight, the darker gesso is going to give you this beautiful shadow and those details are going to be much more visible and they will create nicer effect. It doesn't have to be black gesso, it may be just darker paint, uh, but it's good to have this contrast. So you will build your dimension more. Now there's the challenge to get into the cavities and all the spaces. So I start with the big brush, as you can see, and then I'm going to switch to the smaller one to make it easier for us all. Oh yeah, I always have apron on as well, even in the kitchen, because I'm so messy. <laughs> so now I have an apron on as well. Yeah, it does go fast, as you can see, it's almost painted.
This one is moving a bit, so I have to make sure I will be careful while drying. So I found one element which I didn't dry properly. <laughs> Hopefully it will stay in until I will dry everything. I think so. Now there are some small spots so I can switch the smaller brush and get in there. Luckily there are not too many so it doesn't take too long. This is the moment when everything has one color so all the possibilities open in front of us so we can think about the color palette you would like to use or which kind of product we'd like to use and that is going to be the opportunity moment because depending on what you have you can use different supplies to get quite uh, similar looking results now don't forget Uh, about the, the the dragonfly, right? The dragonfly also should be painted, poor thing. So I'm going to paint the dragonfly as well. Oh, you can see Happy Body Gel is a good glue. I told you it is so, so sticky. I always get things stuck to my fingers later as well. Maybe the wings. Ta -da. Now drying the gesso. I think the dragonfly is dry. Now we need to dry the gesso everywhere. And then we can think about the color palette we would like to do. I have something on my mind. I wanted to create um, a color which will be based on um, silver and a bit of the turquoise and gold. So it's going to be very, very magical with this darker vibe, of course. Uh, I made projects like that for my patrons once. It was one of the Easter eggs, which were not really Easter, and it looked beautiful. So I would like to make something like this as well for you. So we are going to combine the look of the waxes and acrylic paints on one project. But before that, I would like to add some metallic flakes. And metallic flakes are going to make really nice accents in selected parts of the composition. And just when I was drawing, I thought I should try to put metallic flake on the dragonfly and see what is going to happen. <gasps> oh, 
<laughs> bubble of gel. <laughs> I guess I really make it made it hot, hot, super hot. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> it is already very pretty, but let's have a look at the options. Kotku, mam prośbę. Idź do living roomu i przynieś jajko yy, to ze złotym. Jajko wielkanocne. Kominku. E, z, z głową. No, to takie z turkusem. <laughs> yes. So now, this is ready. And if you would like to include metallic flake and then you're planning to use waxes, you have to put the flakes first and then the waxes. Otherwise, the flakes may not stick on the glue that is going to be applied on the wax. So remember, waxes are the finishing touches products. So uh, it is very, very uncertain how the paint or the glue is going to sit on the top. I will try to show you the color palette I'm going for. So I sent my husband to bring uh, the egg <laughs> I was mentioning. And in the meantime, I will start applying the uh, metallic flake glue. So the gilding glue, not gliding glue, gilding glue. And I will put it on the uh, dragonfly. So this is going to give us colorful accent here. So for good measure, it would be nice to have some accents on that side as well. So maybe the star, maybe this cog, a little bit on the flowers, that will be really nice. We can also use it on the school. And that is going to give us a really nice shiny accent, but it's going to be blended in. And these are the colors I'm going to use. Of course, it's not going to be so shiny. This is one of the projects I made for my patrons. So you can see we're going to use some silver and some gold, and we're going to use turquoise. Absolutely beautiful color combination. So let's put the egg together for now. I'll put it in a safe place. And we start with the metallic flake. So um, if you would like to use metallic flakes, you can use, for example, combination of two colors, silver and gold. And that is uh, going to be a good option for us because it's going to give us warmer and colder tones. And then I'm going to cover that with silver and uh, peacock and I will add touches of the gold on the top. And that is uh, our plan for now. So first, application of the flakes. <laughs> Uh, we have to use a bit of the glue and this glue is pretty special because this is formula which is made for uh, gilding waxes, so the, sorry, gilding products, so metallic flakes will stick to that. And that means it's going to stay tacky for a long time. So once you will apply it, then you will have a chance to uh, stick your um, flakes without being in a hurry. I will need to take quite precise brush <sighs> so I can uh, apply it on the dragonfly, which is very small. Let's try. It's probably the smallest element I was gilding so far, so far, but why not? It has to be the first time. Then you need to wait until the glue is going to turn transparent. So we can put our dragonfly on the side. I can remove the excess of the glue. Ah, your head. <laughs> and then we are going to... Um, <laughs> remove the glue and find the spots here we would like to add effect so maybe on this school 
here and doesn't have to be too perfect it's more like for the you know extra metallic touches because once the dragonfly is so shiny you would like some other points of your composition to be shiny as well like for you know better balance so i think that makes sense what we are going to add for example on the flowers on the cog on the star and it's going to be in a kind of random way so not everything will be like perfectly metallic That should work. We can even add a little bit here on the, um, the lily. <laughs> Not everywhere again, just like more like freehand effects. Done. Now we can dry it for a moment with the heat gun so it will turn transparent. Oh, it's sticking to me. I'm happy you like them. I hope to get more colors in the future. We are trying to find a supplier who will be able to provide more crazy colors, but it is not so easy. Now I'm going to rub off uh, the glue of my fingers. And this is because I don't want to get stuck to the metallic flakes. I think you understand some rubbing off. In the meantime, if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer. And I'm rubbing. Rubbing off. I think most of the glue is gone. Most. Ah, almost. So I'm going to use the combination of silver and gold. This, this color combination is called sparkling. And this is what we've got inside. And of course, no sneezing now. Take away the glue and try to be careful once you are applying your flakes. <laughs> oh, my fingers. It will be funny because of course, Okay, they are everywhere now. <laughs> there will be parts that will be gold and there will be parts which are silver. Now we have gold everywhere. And, uh, it's okay. It's part of the process. <laughs> I think this is quite successful. <coughs> Let's it sit for a moment. I will try to find some of the silver ones. <laughs> because apparently the ones on the top were gold. I'm really hoping they will be able to get us more color combinations. And it will be more colors to play with. This is what I really hope for because uh, I made really nice color palettes and combinations of colors and uh, we are in the process of uh, talking to different suppliers to see what can be done, but it's not so straightforward, not so easy. Sometimes it takes time uh, before you're going to get the right product, good quality, size of the uh, packaging it's not so quick as I wish it would be add a bit of grunginess on the top a bit of silver here Yeah, it's not a very clean process, but it's not too, it's not too complicated either. It's just a matter of sticking that 
on the selected parts of your composition. And of course, it seems to be super shiny, but because I will be using wax nearby, some parts of that will be waxed. Uh, so this, these flakes will blend nicely with the metallic look of the waxes. And this is really um, fun solution, but really you have to remember about the right um, sequence. So first the flakes, then the wax. <laughs> Goldfinger. <laughs> yeah. So now the easiest way is to get a brush and brush off the excess over the rubbish bin. But I will first try to show you what happens with the dragonfly. Okay, so the same story. I took a brush and I'm trying to brush off the excess. Ignore my hands, but it's really pretty. This brush is not too nice. I will take something shorter. Oh, this one is easier to use. So I'm trying to only keep the flake on the elements and remove the excess. So, so simple, but very pretty. You can change your embellishments or your elements this way and they get completely different look. Uh, yes, this one is glued with the gilding glue, which is formulated for the metallic flake. So it stays tacky and it's easy to um, stick the product on the top. I forgot about the star. Oh, poor thing. No worries, star. I will, I will cover you. Sorry. Now I just realized. You can see the jar of flakes goes very long way. So, of course, if you make a huge table and you want to make it with the metallic flake effect, it's going to be not so uh, long when you're going to use it up, but for the smaller project, it's going to be just a few more, really, just for a very long time. Now, I will repeat the same brushing over the rubbish bin so I can get some clean space for the painting. I want to get this like freehand look and if I will have too much I can always take black gesso and paint over the excess of the um, metallic flake as well. They go everywhere, believe me. This is like halfway done. <laughs> Now I need to brush a little bit more. Hello, hello, good to see you. I can see more people joining, that's wonderful. Trying to get rid of the excess of the metallic flake. Almost there. Brushing and brushing and brushing. Yeah, just in time for the coloring part. Oh. Metallic flakes everywhere. So now it's time to decide if if um, I need to cover something with black gesso because maybe I applied too much of the glue somewhere. So for example here, I didn't want that, so I can take that off. Oh, here's the extra again.
I can paint inside of the bird school eyes to make it a little bit more clean. But this is like, you know, only if you feel something is annoying. So you can just put a bit of the gesso again. Not a big deal. <laughs> For example, like this. Or here. the edge so cleaning up is not a big problem okay now drying and we're going to use silver and then as I told you a bit of the peacock a bit of the gold and maybe a little bit of the rusty but all in this darker mood so I would like to keep this black visible um, drying. And of course, don't forget there will be The dragonfly here so like this hmm. the first color I wanted to use uh, it is silver to give it like a nice starting color and I would like to combine silver with peacock and uh, then i would like to include a bit of sparks unicorns hair which is beautiful shade of silver gold color it's a bit thick i will have to uh, help it a bit to get more liquid where's the fluid medium i'll add the fluid medium in the meantime so the paint will get to better consistency this is the way you make your acrylic paints smooth and silky again. Fluid medium that is uh, part of the liquid acrylics line. It's the um, liquid gel medium that is uh, base of the most of the acrylic paints. So this is how you add. You can add this. You can add also a bit of water. It's going to be okay. There's water, there's water. So if you see that your paints are getting thicker, this is the way to revive. Adding water, adding fluent medium. It is possible to revive really thick paints, so... Give them a chance, don't throw them away to the bin. Perfect. Now, sip of tea. Oh, looks like I have some metallic flake in my tea as well. It's okay. I will try to avoid it. And then, the colors old silver it's going to be very much uh, good match for the silver metallic flake and i wanted to use the peacock because this is beautiful color turquoise blue green shade and i have to find it but it should be somewhere here hmm yeah. <laughs> Emerald, no. But similar. Okay, I can't find a tube. I will find, hopefully, the tin. Okay. 
so for the first layer I'm going just to use the brush like this this kind of brush and uh, you can squeeze a little bit on the palette and rub it in waxes they are wax based so if you want to clean your brush you need to use hot water and soap or dishwashing liquid yeah that should be okay i can start on the back if i'm not sure what i'm doing this way i can remove the excess as well Ah, uh, yes, uh, if you can, please send me thumbs up. Thank you very much. Thank you for reminding me. I'm getting too excited when it comes to creating and then I keep forgetting about things like that. But it's important if you like my video, if you like my channel, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. So this way we are all going to be informed if something is happening and hopefully youtube will see this is valuable content and they're going to support <coughs> see how quickly it is changing very very fast also if you don't like my videos also you should be give the thumbs up and subscribe just in case because if you don't like something you probably need to check what kind of crappy stuff that person is doing from time to time so you know there's always a reason to subscribe. So you can see how nicely the silver is blending. And if it blends too much, you can clean it up quickly. So it is going to <laughs> reveal part <laughs> of the um, metallic look. So this way, it's kind of like two in one. We've got this shiny parts and then we get less shiny but still metallic look of the wax. Look how beautiful this face is. Okay, so the first thing we are doing is the old silver wax metallic wax and we are turning the, our composition into metal as you can see i use just a bit but it goes a very long way and now our metallic accents are nicely blended in so everything seems to be working perfectly and then our face of the girl looks just magical in the middle okay that is first layer of the color yeah my my precious dog got uh, excited i think the birds <laughs> new everything is new so today our neighbor was cleaning the wall she climbed the wall she almost gave me heart attack because she was so high up she was removing weeds and the Kai, Kai was so, so excited because he, he could see her on the wall. Crazy lady. I, I was just praying she's not going to fall down. It's not so high on her side, but on my side is very high. So, like, ah! She I was clearly annoyed with the weeds that we have and the poison, no, not the poison ivy, the ivy that we have on that part. Okay. So that would be a good start, right? Now, if you'd like to add a little bit of the magical touch, you can in include other colors. Here's our dragonfly that is going to sit. And I was thinking peacock is going to be a good one. This is the green-blue color, so it's going to go nicely with these floral um, parts of the composition. If you feel that you remove too much, don't worry, we can add extra shadow later. But now we are playing with the colors. So silver is done. I will take smaller brush, something that is old and not so pretty, so I can 
go a little bit deeper and to add extra touches. So you can see this is blue green color, just like peacock's feathers, right? So let's give a little bit of that peacock somewhere. Remember, don't take too much on the brush because it goes a really long way. And it's going to give us nice greenish bluish highlights. We can distribute evenly in selected places. Yeah, it's beautiful color. I want to keep it in the cool color, so I'm not going to use uh, real gold. I'm going to use the unicorn's hair, which is silver gold color, but it's going to add beautiful detail. I really like the bones. I know the bones is kind of creepy element, but we go for the darker mood. So I think everything is under control. I can do a little bit of that wax on the dragonfly body as well. Mm, that will be beautiful. So now, before I'm going to work on the finishing touches here, um, I would like to add this gold paint and we're just going to let it go wherever it wants to go so don't be surprised that later i will be adding some shadows with more gesso for example because i would love to um use some water to make it float that should be already very liquid i made it too liquid so now i have <laughs> very runny paint but it's okay that's not a big deal too much of the medium yeah i don't have alcohol inks i have liquid acrylics which are going to give you similar results to that so you should be quite happy with the effects you're able to get with these. So we are adding a bit of the shiny ingredient in. And of course I will calm it down a little bit later, but now we're going bold. Let's see what the water is going to do and we will dry it. It's going to be very shiny. Let it dry so you will see where you have the groups of your color. This is ultra shiny paint, so it goes really beautifully with our uh, metallic flakes.
and once it is dry, it is going to be permanent. Okay, very pretty. Now we are going to add a little bit of the shadow. So we can either use watered down gesso or we can use black liquid acrylic, something that is going to be black and possible to add in a precise way. So I'm going to use a bit of the black liquid acrylic to bring back the shadows in the selected places. So, first of all, in those deeper parts of the composition, you can bring back the black because it is missing because we added so much of the shiny. Sorry. Zarazo. <laughs> Again, it doesn't have to be precise. We can always add water. So the water is going to make it look more natural. See, this is the way to get more of the dimensional look in the places we need it. Don't be afraid, it's going to be all fine. I'm trying to make the shadows of the face more visible. So I'm adding this darker paint. So the eyes, the hair, they would get more definition. I hope you know what I'm trying to do. Okay, so now maybe a bit of the inside of the brush as well. This is more, this is the state of the work when you really start to play and you can go back and forth a couple of times to get to the results that you like. Lucky you, you got the products back in stock. Queens of Steam are getting more and more popular. I can see people discovered what kind of cool things you can do with those faces. So I'm really happy they like my choices. You can see how the face changed because of the black color. Mm -hmm. Now the next thing is, if you would like, you can keep it as it is, very cool looking. Or you can add a little bit of the rusty tones to make it a bit more uh, warm and also pretend part of that is covered with rust. So you can take um, Carmine, which is great rusty color, or Tiger Orange and um, from liquid acrylics and you can do that with these you can use burnt sienna but this will be very brown uh, or where's tiger orange tiger orange here these are good colors for the rust so i will add a tiny tiny bit of the burnt sienna to show you come on there <laughs> almost empty Yeah, so we can do a bit of the rusty touches this way. But this is like the brown rust. 
which is okay, of course. But honestly, I'm uh, more of a fan of more reddish color. So I use Carmine and Carmine is much more red, but very, very strong. So you have to be careful when you apply. You see what I'm doing? Using these ones to add a bit of the color accents. So it looks very metallic and very dark at the same time. Again, too much. Also, because we are mostly painting on the um, on the wax, it's never going to cover completely. It's going to be more like smudges of color, and that is going to create a really beautiful look. That should be it. <laughs> Let's see. Carmine is really must-have color if you like uh, if you like rusty effects. Of course, the dragonfly as well. starts to look amazing honestly um, I'm very pleased I will show you the close-up look and now last touches first of all i will take my finger and the silver and i will clean up some of the imperfections here so i'm going to bring details of the face back just with my finger now touching the tops of some of the embellishments cleaning up so it's not going to be too messy it is still colorful, but with the silver touch on the top. I have leftovers here, so I can easily do that if I want to. So this is adding a little bit more of the definition to it.
And now the matter of if we want to add anything in between or is it okay? Because this is the moment when you can find maybe some imperfections and you feel like ah, maybe I should sprinkle some glitter. <sighs> hmm. Honestly saying, I'm not so sure about adding anything on the top because it, it's really pretty as it is. Maybe a little bit of the black glitter would be the only thing. And that is probably the best part of the plan. But you have to be very careful. So, <laughs> carefully, a little bit of glue, for example, soft gel or something similar, transparent glue, and just in the deeper parts, not on the top of anything, we can add a tiny bit of the shiny black. And then we can stick the dragonfly. So I would say here, Here, maybe. I will try to hold it in my hand so you can see what I'm doing. Now I take soft gel, which is transparent liquid gel medium, and I will just dab it with my brush so I can stick a tiny, tiny bit of the black glitter. I love this peacock color, just a tiny bit of the green, but adding amazing results. The same with the liquid acrylics. Mm, now. Let me tap off the excess, brush off the excess. So just a little, little bit, <sighs> nothing on the face, we don't want it on the face. And now the dragonfly. And for that, I will use the heavy body gel here. Sit. And then I can let it dry naturally this way. There will be no problem with drying at all. I think it is high time to finish, otherwise we will be adding more and more and more. <laughs> well, there is not much space left. <laughs> so we made a combination of the waxes, mostly silver and peacock, a bit of metallic flakes for the super shiny effects, and um, a bit of the liquid acrylics for the black and rusty touches. All of that on the top of the black gesso. So I hope you feel inspired, my dears. And if you like the video, don't forget to give me the thumbs up and to share it with your friends. The more people will see it, the better, because they're going to create beautiful art. Hopefully they will learn something new or maybe they get inspired to try new combinations. So, 
of course I will try to take the photo of it tomorrow and let me show you that in different light so you can see it next to me in different angle so we have our darker mood brush and a lot of the details of course the, the other part is flat but um, if you plan to put it on the wall like I do it is easier if you want to have it more for standing so people will take it in their hands you can decorate the other side uh, you know and it's going to be something that you can admire but I think it really looks cool on the wall Thank you and dziękuję bardzo. Uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends. You can uh, you can share it on your walls. You can leave the links, whatever you like. It is going to be great uh, when more people will be able to see. And if you enjoy classes like that, you can always join me on Patreon and you will have uh, special art classes with me every month and i do uh, for 10 euro per month there is like two uh, classes minimum so there is like a recorded video or live stream and you can become my patron and um, you can uh, enjoy a lot of benefits such as uh, special giveaways challenges and classes i make for patrons are a little bit different than what i usually show here uh, they have more of this kind of vibe when I make a project or I talk about composition, I talk about uh, the ways you can get inspired, how you can learn your own style, how you can do things which are, um, how to make things more unique, how to develop your own creative personality, how to use the products. And this weekend we have our first anniversary. So we're going to have patron party with chats and uh, giggles and games and giveaways. And that means if you join now, you will have access to one year of videos already. It's like Netflix. You get the access, you see everything. You cancel, you just, uh, you just uh, lose the access to everything anytime you like. So my patrons, remember, I'm going to post the information today. We have a date on Sunday, the same time as now. And we have our patron party. And to all of you watching, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. My name is uh, Finavar. This was my studio. I was showing my Prima marketing products. And of course, uh, please remember, if you'd like to join me on Patreon, uh, the link is in the description of the video. You can pick the level you like and uh, join our creative family. We have over 200 people on Patreon now and uh, I heard the activities I prepare for the um, patrons are quite fun. Yes, this weekend, this Sunday, patron party. Party, like a garden party. I hope it's going to be uh, warm enough so I can at least try to be in the garden but it's going to be our flowery and uh, first birthday <laughs> so you can check uh, patron option if you would like to join I will be very very uh, grateful because you support me as an artist and you make videos like that possible and I can focus on teaching uh, sharing the projects and uh, spending time with you. Share the video. Let people know we made some cool project today. Mia, Sunday, Sunday, the same time. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do Saturday because um, because I can't. Uh, life matters. I will post the information for you in the Facebook group and on Patreon in about half an hour, once I will clean my hands. So, thank you so much. Dziękuję znajomym z Polski za oglądanie. Bardzo proszę zaszerować u znajomych, żeby też sobie mogli obejrzeć. And bardzo bym prosiła, żebyście dawali sobie też tam znać nawzajem. Czasami naprawdę warto podzielić się informacją fajnym wideo. 
Thank you, thank you. See you on Sunday to my patrons and uh, see you soon to all of the uh, other lovely followers. I'm always happy to have you here and I hope I will be coming back soon with the next idea or project for you. If you would like to learn more about, oh, about the resin, so how to make this element, there's a video uh, I made last month about how to use the uh, elements in the molds and also I made a video on how to use metallic flakes so you will see a little bit more ideas how to include metallic flakes in your projects uh, that was live stream as well it is uploaded to that channel easy to find bye and thank you so much <laughs> Thank you, Glenda. I'm so, so happy that uh, you uh, recommend. Thank you for uh, support. I, I'm really, truly grateful to all of the patrons who make it possible for me to be full-time artist and product designer.